Yo, 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 people and patrons of the night, it is your boy, the one and only, the host of the Horror Tavern. My name is BD, and uh, welcome back. Make sure that you take a seat, you grab a drink, because we're going to be once again, as always, exploring the limitless cavern that is the horror genre. And today I'm actually going to be talking about a movie that I actually watched the majority of and finished today. And this movie is actually an adaptation of an adult horror book that I actually read a couple of months ago. And uh, this is arguably one of the most iconic and famous creature feature slash animal attack horror movies that ever came out. And this movie, you can argue very well, um, is the foundation and started off the kick for shark mania in horror books, horror movies. The book of which the movie is based off of was very famous and iconic, but I would argue that this movie is even more iconic and famous. Um, so yeah, this is where it all started in terms of shark attack horror movies. So if you can't tell what I'm talking about, today I'm going to be reviewing Jaws. 1975, which is an adaptation of the book Jaws by Peter Benchley, uh, which came out one year before. It was published in 1974. This movie came out a year later, 1975. I did not look into why it got picked up so fast. Maybe Jaws was that big of a success as a book, or, you know, the director was very much interested, uh, but I, I can look into that for the future. But uh, yeah, today I'm going to be talking about Jaws 1975. Now, I'm not going to be talking about the differences between the book and the movie and which one I prefer. I'm actually going to be making a separate video on that. <coughs> Excuse me. That'll be uploaded after this one. So that video will be discussing, not in detail, I'm not going to go like every little analytical scene by scene, detail by detail, but I've obviously read the book and I've seen the movie, so I can just talk about the differences that I know off the top of my head, and then um, I can just talk about which one I prefer. But this review is just going to be strictly on the movie and my thoughts about the movie. So this movie, Jaws 1975, what is it about? Well, first off, it's directed by Steven Spielberg, which all of you probably know. Steven Spielberg, one of the most famous movie directors out there. The dude is an absolute veteran. He's got a huge catalog of famous work. And um, Peter Benchley is actually involved within the writing of this movie. I think he wrote the screenplay of it, but I know he's he's part of the writing team on this movie. So he was actually actively involved, the author, um, in the film, and he actually appears in the film um, as an interviewer. He, there's a scene with the interviewer on the beach, and uh, Peter Benchley turns out to be that interviewer, so that's really cool. That's a fun little cameo right there, and the fact that he's involved with the movie probably speaks to its quality to a certain degree, um, and it's also Steven Spielberg's just talent as a director. Um, whatever you may say about Steven Spielberg, uh, this movie is showing his talent. So what's the movie about? So the movie is about um, this small tourist town called Amity. Um, in the small tourist town of Amity, it very much banks on the success of the summer. A lot of people come over to this island town and they enjoy the beaches, they enjoy the warm weather, they enjoy the parades that happen. Um, July 4th is a big event there. You know, they have, they have parties, they have, you know, parades and all different types of stuff. A lot of people just love the beautiful summer beaches on Amity. And, um... What happens is that uh, the movie opens up with this party happening uh, towards night. It's a bunch of like college kids and teenagers just having fun, partying on the beach, drinking, mingling, you know, dancing, singing. And uh, this woman and this man run off onto the beach um, separate from the party that's going on uh, because they want to go take a late night swim. And the guy's pretty drunk. So as he starts undressing, um, the woman gets in the water, <coughs> excuse me, before he does. And he ends up actually falling asleep on top of the sand in the beach. Um, so she's basically out there just swimming relatively close to the shore, like maybe like 30, 40, 50 feet out. Um, and as she's swimming, she's calling over to the guy. The guy is knocked out. He's not going to get in. And uh, she gets attacked by an unseen threat. Um, she starts getting viciously mauled. You don't actually see any of the gore, but you see her start getting violently thrashed around in the water. She starts screaming and panicking, and then eventually she goes under. And it cuts to the next day, where you're introduced to a family, and this family belongs to uh, the chief of the Amity Police Department, which is a very small force, only a couple of officers, but nonetheless, he's the chief, and his name is Chief Brody. Um, I believe the family's from New York. Could be wrong. I don't know if they're... I think... 
I don't know if they're visiting. Are, are they new? I'm not sure if he's new to the police department and that's why they say they're from New York or maybe they live in New York and come to Amity during like the summer. I'm not sure of the situation, but he's the chief of the police department and uh, he gets a call. He gets called in um, to go check out this incident where this woman, uh, basically the woman who got attacked in the earlier scene at night, washes up on shore. So a police officer and him go out there and as he gets to the beach, <clears throat> excuse me, I've had this bad cough for like the past couple weeks, so a lot of you already know that, but if you don't, it's the first time watching the video. I'm trying to recover from it. Um, as he gets on the beach, he sees this woman wash up, and they first thought that this might be like an accidental drowning. Maybe it was some negligence that happened, uh, but then the Chief Brody sees the corpse, and the corpse is brutally mauled. I mean, there is just like a torso, um, there's a severed arm, there's clearly huge chunks of meat ripped off, this entire thing is mangled extremely badly. So the woman <coughs> assumably got attacked viciously by a shark in the water, and sharks are very rare to ever appear in Amity. Um, this may be the very first case. So right away, Chief Brody starts filing out the police report and plans to shut down and uh, basically sweep through the surrounding water to find the shark because there's been a shark attack, I believe for the first time ever, in this small tourist town of Amity. But because it's a small tourist town, uh, the higher-ups, the chairman of the town and the mayor uh, do not want to close down the beaches because the beaches are the main source of income for the town. All these tourists come in, they shop at the local businesses, you know, they spend money, um, they help out the economy of the small town. So a lot of small businesses in the town survive the winter um, and spring leading into the summer because of the traffic that comes in all throughout the summer um, and especially during the 4th of July which is coming up which is a big event in the town and the mayor is played by I want to give a shout out Murray Hamilton um, who unfortunately passed away in 1986 um, at 63 due to lung cancer so RIP to you Murray Hamilton but I want to give a shout out to Murray Hamilton because Murray Hamilton plays the mayor he does a good job and he actually, I recognize him because he plays in one of my favorite Twilight Zone episodes from the OG show. So season one, episode two of the Twilight Zone is called One for the Angels. And that's my favorite Twilight Zone episode I've seen so far. It's almost a damn near perfect Twilight Zone episode. I have it as a timeless classic certified, but my opinion. Um, and Murray Hamilton plays in that episode. He plays as the... Grohl of Death, the Grim Reaper, um, and he sort of has like a pseudo Rod Serling feel to his character. He does a great job acting in that um, episode. He does a fantastic job there. So that's one of the big reasons why I love that episode so much is because of Murray Hamilton, and he plays the mayor in this movie. So that's pretty cool. Shout out to him and RIP, you did some amazing work. I checked his catalog. He's been in like so many TV shows and movies and stuff. So the dude is an absolute G. He's been in a lot of different stuff. Um, so Murray Hamilton plays the mayor, the mayor and the chairman of the town, and obviously the small business owners don't want to shut down the beaches because they're going to get a huge amount of traffic, but there's been this vicious attack, so what do they do? And then soon after, when people are on the beach, a uh, small boy goes out to play in the water, and a bunch of other kids and people are out, you know, close to shore, just paddling, playing around on their rafts and stuff, and uh, he ends up getting attacked by something gets end up attacked by this assumably shark and uh, it's a vicious attack you know lots of blood in the water um, he gets pulled out from under the raft and everybody is screaming running out of the water and as soon as everybody gets out <coughs> excuse me um then the mother of the son uh you know is kind of looking to see where he is and she can't find him and then they realize that the kid got taken and officer brody chief brody was actually on the beach that day with his family and, um, you know, he sees that this boy got taken and he feels personally responsible because of the fact that he did not shut down the beaches, according to the mayor and chairman. The mayor and chairman said, oh, no, 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 treat the shark attack like it was a, a boating accident, a propeller. Um, and he knew better, but he had to follow orders because these are powerful people. The boy gets taken. And then as um, they have a town meeting, this gets addressed. Um, they have to figure out what to do. And then uh, Chief Brody says he's going to be calling in for some help, see if they can find the shark, kill it, capture it, have some fishermen. And there's this uh, older fisherman um, named Quinn. 
and Quinn is in the back of this town hall meeting. You can tell he's like an OG. He's like the top fisherman of the town, really uh, worn down veteran kind of dude. And he says that he will find the shark, um, but not for the $3,000 bounty. He will do it for the $10,000 bounty, but he will guarantee that he captures it, kills it, and brings it to him. Because again, he says, I know more about fishing in these waters than any of these other guys do, and you're going to pay top dollar to get my services. And then he heads off. Um, and then you get introduced to the next main character because Chief Brody called in for help. And one of the help that comes in is this uh, wealthy shark biologist, and his name is uh, Matt Hooper. Uh, Matt Hooper comes in, and he's a very sort of enthusiastic, funny, charming guy. Him and Chief Brody kind of kick it off. They have some funny banter and moments. And he's there to give more information about the shark, take a look at some of the attacks that have happened, and identify it, and then figure out a solution on how to capture it and how to find it. So Matt Hooper, Chief Brody, they end up doing a lot of research on this uh, potential shark. And they find out that it is possibly... Um, Later on, they find out that it's possibly a great white shark, um, 20 foot or even more, a huge full grown adult great white shark that is prowling the waters of Amity and is doing some abnormal feeding uh, where it's just opportunistically killing and eating people that are out there swimming. And they find that out because they do actually capture like a 10 or 9 foot shark that was a tiger shark. One of the fishermen caught it, but it didn't match the bite wounds um, of the victim. So they have to basically find this great white <coughs> shark. Um, and they may or may not try to get some more help. Uh, Matt Hooper and Chief Brody and uh, the fisherman Quinn may or may not get involved and they have to go out on a big search. So you end up getting a giant fishing adventure uh, slash thriller slash horror movie um, happening later half where they have to go and find this shark. Um, and that's basically the plot without me giving too much away. Again, I recommend all of you check out this movie one because it's a cult classic. It's iconic. And uh, this, this is a good spoiler alert. This is a good movie. Um, and I would say it's even a, a really good movie. So I would recommend you watch it. So as to why I feel that way, let's talk about the positives of this movie. First of all, the cast of characters and the actors in this movie are very good. Um, Matt Brody. Um, I said Matt Brody. It's Chief. I'm mixing up, combining the two. I'm, I'm, I'm Dragon Ball fusion dancing the characters. Uh, Chief Brody, really good character. Um, I forgot his actor's name, um, but they do a good job. Um, Chief Brody is pretty well played. Um, I enjoy him in this movie. He's not anything standout, but he's just a good, trustworthy kind of leader figure. <coughs> Matt Hooper. Uh, he's a pretty good character as well. His actor does a good job with him. I would say Matt Hooper is a standout role in here. I really, really enjoy his sort of comedy and banter with the Chief. Um, they have a good relationship with each other. Um, they get along quite well. They become best friends by later in the movie. And uh, Quinn, the seasoned veteran, um, I believe his actor's name is Robert Shaw. I could be wrong, um, but I think it's Robert Shaw. Quinn. Uh, I think is my favorite character in the movie. He's that seasoned veteran fisherman I talked about. Um, he's really charming, really cool. And I love the dynamic between um, the fisherman, you know, Matt Hooper, the shark biologist, and the Chief Brody. They spend a lot of time together on screen. You see them build their relationship. And I think they do a good job, um, you know, helping out with the movie. You are very much empathetic towards them. You like their dynamic. And uh, yeah, I enjoy, their, I enjoy them together. Um, another big positive of the movie is uh, the horror, which is the shark. Uh, there was a $9 million budget for this movie, and it ended up turning out, I think, close to $480 million in the box office. So this was a smash box office hit. Um, but $9 million shows because the shark animatronic in this movie is horrifying. They made like a 20, 25 foot giant shark animatronic that um, is shown in a lot of the attack scenes. And it is horrifying, dude. The fact that you get a real life, you know, animatronic, something that's practical shown in the movie makes it much more intense for the action scenes because, um, you know, well done CGI is good. But in the back of your mind, you know, it's CGI. So yes, it's good. But and it's not real. And this is not real, but it feels real because it's a huge, giant animatronic shark that's attacking. So it's a physical presence that, 
you know, these people are being attacked by. And it looks great. This giant animatronic shark is great. I love the attack scenes in this movie with this giant shark because they're so well done. They're so terrifying. They're so creepy. Just getting that image of this, you know, 20, 25 foot giant great white shark animatronic, you know, moving through the water, leaping out the water. When this thing leaps out the water, it looks like Satan, bro. This looks like Aqua Satan. I rebuke kill. This thing is horrifying, dude. It is the goddamn killing machine of the ocean. Great white sharks are terrifying. This giant animatronic shark is fucking horrifying. Um, and they have some good mixed in shots there where they, I think they took some footage of real great white sharks. Either they took it or they paid for it. I think they just paid for it. Um, and they mixed that in with the animatronic. So it's really well spliced in. This movie is really well shot, really well paced. Um, so yeah, that's a big positive to this movie. And, um, as for negatives, I honestly can't think of any negatives. I mean, outside of the plot being a little bit simple, you know, pretty simple. It's, it's This movie is nothing that really, really shocks me as to being amazing. But it's still, it's not amazing, but it's a, a very good movie. This is a quite good, you know, creature feature horror movie. I'm a huge fan of creature features. This one is arguably one of the most iconic and animal attack ones of creature feature are especially, um, you know, they reach me because... You know, Creature Feature includes monsters, cryptids, stuff like that. Um, you know, original monsters that authors and writers and directors come up with. But um, Creature Features is real life animals. And yes, a lot of the time they have erratic behavior. That's not what happens in the animal kingdom. You know, I think great white sharks actually kill the least amount of people. Um, surprisingly, as much flack as they get because they're the biggest and scariest. They don't kill as many people as like bull sharks. Bull sharks kill the most people. Um, in the world because bull sharks can go into fresh water and they're called bull sharks because they're very aggressive great white sharks do kill people but they don't kill people as much as like bull sharks do so yeah and i think was jaws inspired by bull shark i don't know i think maybe jaws was inspired by bull shark attacks i don't know if that's true or not but yeah so uh, even though it's not nature wise accurate um just the these animals, these, these animals do exist. 20 foot great white sharks do exist. 25 foot great white sharks, not far off. Maybe they do exist. There's some rumors out there that there are great white sharks that are potentially bigger, like 22, 23, 25 feet. We don't know. We haven't got any confirmed ones yet, but 20 foot is definitely out there. There's pictures, plenty of them, videos too. Um, and they are horrifying. Great white sharks are straight up nightmare fuel. They are apex predators. And uh, this movie monstrifies a great white shark. And this movie is definitely the reason why a lot of people back in the 1970s and going forward were terrified of the ocean and horrified to go in there. And uh, great white sharks have not gotten a good rep due to these Jaws movies. But for the sake of horror, thank you, great white sharks, for your contribution to the trust fund. This movie will get an 8.2 out of 10. A very good movie, good creature feature, iconic movie. And I recommend all of you guys go check it out. It's summertime, beaches are open, water's open. If you want some good paranoia for yourself, go check out the movie. But overall, this is a good film. I recommend it for all of you. And it gets my stamp of approval. 8.2 out of 10, very good, well-packaged movie. All the positives that I mentioned. And honestly, no real negatives. So cheers to Jaws. 1975, directed by Steven Spielberg, and screenplay written by Peter Benchley, the author. That's all I have for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this movie review. If you did, please, if I can ask you to do something, hit that subscribe button down below. We are almost at 300 subscribers. It would mean the world to me if we can surpass that because it shows me that my channel has been growing very, very fast, that my videos are reaching out to you guys. You guys enjoy them. You guys get good content as frequently as I can produce it. And I want some interaction. You know, comment down below. How do you feel about this movie? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? What are some summer horror movies or creature features that you enjoy? Let me know so I can talk to you guys. We can get some recommendations in there. And hit that like button as well. And again, comment helps the video go out into the algorithm, which can be difficult, but your participation makes it all the better. And uh, that's all I have for today. So please, if you consider subscribing, liking, and commenting down below, I appreciate you more than you can know. The next video I'm going to be recording right now and then uploading later, um, so maybe like a day after this one, is going to be my comparison of the Jaws book, Jaws movie. Hope you guys enjoy it. I'll keep that relatively short. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but just to keep it out there so you guys can enjoy. God bless, deuces, and uh, go enjoy the summer. Uh, these days don't come back for a while, so 
make the most of them now. All right, off to more shark action. Let's talk about the book versus Burke book. <laughs> Stroke book versus the movie next. Uh, enjoy. I'll see you.